Now, if you thought that Red Bull gives you wings, you should meet our next speaker. And I'm not just talking about his talk. He's actually known to gesticulate and move around about as much as me. Uh, so, if you've ever wondered how you can get better business agility with flight levels, here's Jose Casal to tell us more. Thank you. This is the moment where I usually fall. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to try something which is very risky for me. Um, because of the, telling the, the stories about the pandemic, last year I did something which is, I'm going to say in Finnish now, Mina Asun Tamperela, Ya Empuhu Suomea. The subtitles of that was that I'm, I'm really, really honored to be doing this talk in Agile, Agile Tampere because I'm now a resident here in Tampere. I don't speak Finnish. That's something that will take me 10, 20 years, maybe. Um, but it's a real honor to be in my, in my hometown um, introducing my talk about um, how to achieve better business, business agility with flight levels. Um, I'm going to want to build on something that Darren was saying here. The, the first thing I'm going to say is that we, we don't have a specific recipe that says, this is what you need to do to achieve business agility. Um, every company is its own world, it has its own challenges, it has its own context, the whole culture, whatever it is, history, economic position. But what we tend to see is common patterns and anti-patterns, um, which then we can try to tackle. Um, and the most important takeaway that I will say is like, what we should be doing when we're looking at like, business agility, improving how the business works as a whole, is keep trying to address real problems. It's not about following a plan or something idealistic. It's about what, what, how can we make the biggest impact now. Um, so I'm going to show you, um, um, if you want, to do the, you want to download the slides, they're already available there, so QR codes. Um, but um, I'm gonna, I would like you to, to consider this. Um, do, you do you experience these four examples in your own context? having more work that we can deliver, um, dealing with dependencies, work interrupt interruptions all the time, and um, is it hard to, to know why, why are we doing this? What's the impact of what we're doing? So I I'm going to invite you for a minute to um, talk to people around you and just say, does this resonate with you? And what can you do? What are you doing to address this? Just for a minute, have a chat, connect to the topic. So I invite you to talk. I'm going to keep silent. Amongst yourself, talk about yourselves. That's working now. Yay. Okay, that's about a minute. Um, so, I'm going to make an assumption that unfortunately most of us experience these things, unfortunately. It's many times the, the nature of, of how things are. But it's also like, how do we go about this? Now, I'm going to tell you a story. I mean, there was once upon a time a team. Um, and one of the things that we do many times in Agile or in Agility for, the last, for so many years we're doing this is that we are very, very, our, our thinking many times is very team-centric. We're always looking at the teams. So we, we work on teams and we say, well, you know, Agile, let's, let's make the teams Agile or let, let's work with the teams becoming, becoming Agile themselves. Um, so you will see things like teams that will end up having like a, you know, their boards, they could be really, really working in really good Agile, agile ways. But then we got things like happening that we see all frequently. It's like we got these backlogs. And the backlogs is, they're interesting because work arrives and it's almost like it arrives out of nowhere. It's like mythical lands that produce backlog items. 
Yeah? We don't know where they come from. There is this sort of like cloudy space that just somehow generates backlog items. I said that backlogs come from areas where there are unicorns and elves and things, all other mystical creatures. At the other end, the team often delivers, but if, you are, if we are lucky, we deliver to production. In large organizations, it might go somewhere in a black hole and we don't know really, when we don't have these feedback loops that tell us how well this is working, but also what kind of impact are we really doing to the change of the business? Teams are working really, really hard, but sometimes we just don't know why we are working on these things and what's the impact, how are we changing the future of the company. Um, and the other final thing is that then we start having all these dependencies where we keep getting blocked or we need someone else to do something or you know, we don't have the expertise and stuff like that. So that gives us a, a challenging situation. Now, if we, look at the, if we look at the team, the team is going to be really, really, really busy doing, the, doing their work. We spread out, we try to get this mythical land out of the way, and, and the team is actually working in what it is a very, very long end-to-end -end process. The time it takes us to go from ideas to something in, in delivery can be a whole long process. It can take a long time. And we just agilify in that little step. And then we go, woo, we're agile. OK? Um, if instead, and that is because we're trying to get the teams also like busy, we're concentrating on making the teams agile. Yeah? Um, but if you look at what happens to the work, it looks more like this. The work over that process is lots of delays, waiting for approval, waiting for a meeting, waiting for expectation. We don't have a budget yet. And we do a little bit of work from time to time. Yeah? So while the teams are really busy and our utilization is really awesome, when we look at how busy the work is, the work is most of the time just sat in a queue waiting for something to happen to it. And instead of, we, we talk about something called flow efficiency. We see organizations that how busy they work, how capable they are to deliver work, it's a terrible numbers. Companies that are very successful, they're making millions, billions, but still the way we run the work is very, very inefficient. We can do better. We can, we can try to get agility beyond the team and, and build um, business agility. That team, we we said before, how do we go about this? That team, um, probably in a large organization, you have multiple teams. You may have tens, hundreds of teams. Um, and all these teams are focused on delivering work. What happens often as well is that even if these teams were agile, what we now have is agile silos. So we replace functional silos with agile silos but it's still silos. The teams have their own backlogs. It's probably that those backlogs have interactions between themselves, and that's what we see many times with dependencies. And we tend to often see lack of coordination between the team. There might be some element of coordination, as we have a lot of pro product management, portfolio management, but it's not, effective, it's not done effectively. And the last thing is that is that we don't see the impact on business outcomes. So flight levels is a model which allows us to think about the organization, to see how we can make work flow better through our organization. That's effectively what we're trying to do. How do we go about this? Those teams, um, team level agility that we have, what we are focusing there is, we call flight level one, we are focusing on the operational, the delivery aspects of work. Let's deliver things. At that level, we have a lot of detail. We are working on smaller pieces of work, like stories or epics, whatever language you use. But when we need to coordinate ourselves, just having team level agility is not enough. What we can do is to say, well, let's get a coordination of this work. Let's work together. And 
let's see how we can, we, can, we can make things better. So in this case, for example, notice the color of the t-shirts of the people in, 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 in the one above. What you will have is people from the, the teams coming together and saying, okay, what, how do we work? What needs to be done? How do we collaborate? How do we avoid conflicts and dependencies and so on? Um, and you may have many of these. You may have different products. You may have end-to-end -end processes and so on. So we will say, okay, how do we coordinate? How do we can work together? How do we anticipate problems? Stories that we see sometimes is organization where that team won. Um, for example, we've seen this, it's a real story. Um, team one has a deadline to deliver something by Christmas. Because you put deadlines in Christmas, don't you? Yeah. Um, team two is a team that has to then do something with it. But team two is not going to work on it until, until June because they have their own backlog and they have their own product owners and the whole thing. Team one is killing themselves, killing itself to deliver in the Christmas de deadline when there is absolutely no need to do that because team two is not gonna work on it until June. So either we, what, what we lacked there was a conversation at that le coordination level to say, what will make sense? Do we need to get team two to try to do it earlier? Let's, let's schedule the work better. Or is this deadline just pointless? We just put it in Christmas because we like to do that. Yeah? Um, so we can help each other better. If you have multiple products, multiple services, what you can have is also the coordination of those products. And at this level, um, we are not looking at, them at, the, at the detail. We might looking at the slightly bigger pieces of work. We have less definition. So we may be looking at things like, well, epics, features, initiatives. Now, when you have multiple products competing for the same amount of capacity, especially we have dependencies, the challenge is like, okay, what's more important? This feature for that product or this feature for that product? Or this product or this other product? What we don't have here yet is any sort of a strategic alignment. What will make the biggest difference on the company? Yeah? Um, and if we can agile five that, that level, we can have agile conversations and interactions at the strategic level, that goodness cascades through the organization. Yeah? This thing about having a tsunami of work at the gates of the teams would probably be, be improved. Maybe not eliminated, but be improved. Yeah? And without this, kind of conversations, what happens, in, what happens is that we are constantly creating new projects, more work and more work and more work. Work that piles up, that we cannot coordinate. Literally, we're interrupting each other. Um, are you familiar with the term denial of service attacks? We are running a denial of service attack on our own organization by literally just creating more work and interrupt and interrupt and interrupt. So with flight levels, we can have a conversational way of, like, a way of managing the flow. One thing that I will say is that when you're looking at this, if you are seeing oh, senior managers, middle managers, workers, that, this, that's a hierarchical view of agility or organization. That's not a hierarchical view um, of how we do it. You can see people from team, the, the blue team, team one, you can see the same blue t-shirt uh, potentially having strategic conversations. It's about go, having the right conversations and the right level be in the right room to make the right decisions. I use the word right too many times. Just have a, be have a, best, a best attempt at doing these conversations. So this is not a hierarchical view. This is about how do we get the work to flow through the organization. It's very work-oriented. Okay. What we see many times in organizations is that we don't have models like this. If we don't pay attention to, we don't focus on the work, well, the only thing we have is the organigram. And what we see many times with agility and beyond the teams is that what we are doing is replicating in agile ways the organizational structure. So we are not resolving the problem. We are still having a hierarchical 
in, in hier, in hierarchical interactions rather than work-based interactions. Um, and you know that we've been doing a lot of work with, like, you know, we did Agile, and Agile is there in order to replace waterfall. And we have all this battle of mindsets, the Agile mindset, the traditional mindset. That's not, I think below that, there is an even more fundamental tectonic clash. This is like giants, mythological giants clashing with each other. And is the battle between resource management and flow management, which is even more fundamental. Resource management is the traditional thinking we will have, where we are trying to get each one of us as busy as possible. We probably will call you resources, or we'll call each other resources even worse. Yeah? And it's really important to get the workers really, really busy, because otherwise, what's the point of paying salaries and things like that? Yeah? So we push work at people. If a team doesn't have enough work, I can give you more work. Always there is more work. Yeah? Even if the challenge that we have is that by generating work in one team, that team has dependencies that could be drowning other teams. It doesn't make any sense to start the work. Yeah? What we do is like move to flow management, focus on the work, and try to think about how we make the work move through the organization as effectively, as efficiently, and as predictably as we can. Let the workers organize themselves in or around the work, but put the work at the center of our, you know, of our radar. So going back to that picture, and this is where we got the pool and all the stuff. So going to, to, towards this picture again, the work here are all these different items that we have of, on the left. We have different types of work, and these are just examples, you will have other language. Yeah? But imagine that we have this kind of work. Um, first of all, identify the work. What we didn't do is say, okay, well, we got like initiatives and features and, and all these things. Okay, but where does the work appear? How does it get created? How do we demystify this thing? And usually we start thinking, okay, where, what triggers new work? So we may have triggers like new legislation. We got new legislation, we have to deliver something to, to comply with that legislation. So what we might end up saying is like, well, in order to meet that new legislation, we will create an initiative. That initiative will be decomposed into features, maybe into epics, and because we need to coordinate multiple teams, multiple departments, let's do this at a coordination level. Once we get to a point where we can send it down to teams, so the teams can take the work and say, okay, yeah, this is now something that we can deliver, we might take it to the, to the team level and then focus on delivery. Cool? That's one example. Um, but it could be that, you know, the, we, the initiative is created by, by a product. Does this make sense in the organization? If I do this, what's the impact? What else is coming? So maybe I say, like, you know, before we take on the work, let's, let's have a, a more holistic view. Let's coordinate strategically what will make sense, what's the impact, what happens if I start this work. So we may have a conversation there, more strategic conversation. It could be that we have other triggers, like a strategic, the strategy, generating new initiatives. It kind of like follows the same path later on, but it has a different origin. Or it could be other things like, you know, completely different paths, like, you know, business as usual. We may have defects coming directly to the teams. What we often don't see is how all these things fit together. These are just three examples. If you imagine all the possible routes that the work has follows in our next session, we are dealing with a cacophony of you know, different works, different sources, different demands, different urgencies. We've got a lot of complexity, potentially. Okay? And, but the, the next thing was, okay, why? If, if this is what we have, what kind of conversations, interactions, meetings, workshops, like talk around the coffee area, do we need to successfully deliver the work? And we start thinking about, okay, well, you know, what interactions do we have? And maybe I need to have a strategic planning 
meeting every, no, every so often in a level three. Um, maybe I need some product planning or product refinement. Maybe I need to have, you know, whatever things. Team, I might have a daily thing. But some teams, maybe they don't need to meet every week. I'm working with teams in finance departments where they only need to do it every, every two or three days. There is no enough change for them. Yeah? So rather than following patterns of what is the meetings that we should have, we start designing um, interactions to have the right conversations. And then we try to say who needs to be in this room. Who needs to be in this conversation to then have better decision making, to know what's going on, and so on. As you can see, we have the arrows. The arrows is double, double points. It's, it goes in two directions. We might be generating work. In reverse, we're getting feedback loops. We can constantly, you know, if we're working at the team level in something like this, I could potentially say, I am doing this bit of work because it helps this strategic theme. Wow. So many teams have many times lost. Yeah? But also, we're doing this work, and we can send feedback towards that strategy, or that new feature, or that product development. And then we can, we can use that feedback to make better decisions. OK? Now, this is not showing us, OK, but how do we organize the teams? What we can do, then, is kind of like inflate this. This is flat. We can inflate this and say, all right, how, what kind of teams and structure do we need? What kind of um, coordination do we need to have? So I might have six teams on the right, which are working towards a dealer product. I'm selling cars. So I'm building the features for, a dealer, for dealing with dealers. Um, I might have other ones, other teams that are working in customer experience or customer portals. Other ones are working on this. And I've got all these other departments which are fundamental to the successful running of the business, which also need to be part of it. Yeah? Um, I, was, I was working in, um, in government, in the Scottish government a few years ago. Needed to recruit someone. The HR process, six months. Longer than, the, longer than what we needed that person for. Yeah? So how can we bring the whole organization working together? Organization comes from the word organism. It's all the cells working together rather than fighting each other. Okay? So we will be, but we can now build potentially or develop little by little an organization that is built around the flow of work rather than built around hierarchies and people power and things like that. So it can be a much more effective and impactful thing. Won't happen overnight. But we can, we can have this intentional change process or way of like, bringing more agility, resolving real issues. Um, so as a recap, um, we need to go beyond team level agility. We've done enough of that. We need to do, we need to do um, agility at the team level, of course. But it's just not enough if we want to change the business performance and the business agility. Um, we need to embrace flow management and unshackle ourselves, uh, ourselves from um, resource thinking. Yeah? Focus on the work, let people organize themselves. We are all keen on that. Um, don't replicate the character of your organization. Put the work at the core of what you do. You know, our customers don't care how we are organized internally. What they care is that they get a great service, they get great products. Yeah? And we, we have so much effort trying to organize ourselves internally, we forget about the customers. Or we give them bad service. OK, or bad products. Um, map how the work flows. Um, we use the flight routes. And flight routes are incredibly powerful when you, when you get people in the room identifying those triggers. The, work item, the flight items, work items, types, and the flight routes. It's like, ah, so this is how we work. But you get people doing it themselves, building really powerful conversations, um, and understanding each other, and stuff like that. Um, that also allows us to identify the, the dependencies, and what is the dependency map that we have. Um, 
Then design meaningful, agile interactions to fit your context. Have the right people in the, right, in the room. Um, story about a university in the UK that I used to work with, or used to work in. Um, there, were, um, there was a very hierarchical structure, so you had all these committees to make decisions and all the stuff. And um, I was working in the IT department. At that time, we were talking about replacing our um, mail system, email system. There was one true expert in our, in our organization that really was, his, his advice was fundamental to, make, to decide what to do. You have this option, that option. Which one do we choose? He wasn't senior enough. So he was not allowed in the room. So what was this committee doing? We're making all these decisions. By wait, we have to go and talk to Darren. The guy was called, no, not that Darren. I work with him as well. Another story. Um, so, <laughs> but um, um, the, the, this committee was spending lots of time making decisions and trying to come up with, with things where they didn't have the right voice in present in the room. They had to then go and say, okay, we've done everything. If Darren agrees, well done. If he doesn't agree, we have to come back and do it everything again. But Darren is still not in the room. Yeah? Don't do that. We do that all the time. We need to avoid that. Um, so get the right people in the room. Build a work system topology that enables the flow of work. Um, remember where I was talking originally talk about the, the flow efficiency? If it was 8% and you're a successful company and probably you, you will have these kind of numbers, making it a little bit better can have a significant change in the business performance, in the numbers, in our effectiveness and so on, but more importantly, in how it feels to work in that company. In the end of the day, when we talk about business agility, it's about building environments that are fit for people. The work that we tend to do happens here. If I'm stressed, if this engine is not working well, difficult to have a, a, a great work. So when we're looking at great environments, we're looking for environments for human beings to thrive. And these things are help. Not, not, not the entire solution, but help. Um, and yeah, it takes time. So it takes time. It will be emerging. You, we will make mistakes. We make mistakes all the time. Um, connected to what Darren was saying, the culture, the, the initial settings will allow you to do, will allow us to do things or not. There will be things that will take more time. They will be not ready for it. People might not be willing for it to do it. They might not be able to do it. But when we are ready, able, and willing, magic can happen. So keep trying, keep improving, and see what happens. Um, if you want to find out more, what the things that inspired me, these are some books that I will recommend. Have you re seen these books before? A few of them? Good. I see nothing. So these are great books to, to read or listen. Um, and uh, I will, I'm done, I will, I will take some questions, but before that I will ask you a question. Again, talk to someone next to you, maybe someone else, and think about how do you feel that something like Fly Levels could help you in your context? So I ask first the questions, and then you take, I'm going to give you a minute. Have a chat. Thank you. <laughs>